I will talk about uh, permafrost and uh, we'll give you some uh, brief information what it is and how it changes and how it could be important, changes in permafrost could be important for carbon cycle. Uh, and uh, work what uh, I will uh, describe here is a result of work of a group of, of scientists at the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks and also other, our colleagues in uh, not only the United States but also in other parts of the world, including Russia, Mongolia and other uh, places where permafrost exists. Uh, so first, uh, definition. Uh, well, uh, permafrost define the most common definition defined on the uh, base of, basis of temperature. So the, the formal definition is that any uh, rock, soil, any earth material except for glacial ice, uh, which is at or below zero degrees Celsius uh, for two or more years, it is permafrost. So two things here. So temperature, below temperature, it's one thing. And second, very important, it has to be below zero degrees Celsius or at zero for two or more years. So uh, according to this definition, of, of course, active layer is not part of uh, permafrost, but everything below, if it's not thawing in the summer or two summers, it's already permafrost. So now if you look at the map here, which uh, shows permafrost extent, uh, yeah, unfortunately colors are not that great in this projector, but um, uh, permafrost concentrates in uh, higher latitudes. And uh, there is an uh, area of continuous permafrost where you will find permafrost practically everywhere except maybe under uh, deep lakes and big rivers. And then discontinuous permafrost zone south from that, uh, which permafrost and non-permafrost uh, exist together. But uh, both continuous and discontinuous permafrost concentrates in the northern hemisphere in the high latitudes. So permafrost is a product of cold climates. And because of that, uh, changes in, climates, in climate will definitely lead to changes in permafrost. And, and usually permafrost reacts very quickly in, in changes in, to changes in climate uh, in terms of temperature. So this warmer climate, which we see right now, uh, permafrost uh, getting warmer pretty quickly. However, to change extent of permafrost or thickness of permafrost is much more longer process. It takes much long, longer time. It will react, it reacts to the changes in climate and I will show in my presentation uh, but it's, it does uh, slower. It's much slower process than, than changes in, in, in atmosphere. So the permafrost is, uh, uh, ranges from uh, very warm, zero degrees Celsius in the southern limits of permafrost to minus 15 and colder degrees Celsius uh, in the higher Arctic. And uh, in terms of thickness of permafrost, it starts from several uh, less than meter and up to 1,500 meters of depth in the central uh, East Siberia. So the, the range is huge, uh, and the age of permafrost is also very different, from several years to many millions of years. So in uh, uh, my presentation, I will uh, uh, try to emphasize on, on uh, relationship between uh, permafrost and, and carbon. So, and there's uh, three major uh, pools of carbon sequestered in permafrost. The first one, what uh, Howe was uh, described just uh, uh, in the previous talk, is the, the most dynamic one in the upper one to three meters of permafrost. And to uh, accumulate this carbon in this, uh, in this pool, it takes just uh, tens to hundreds to thousands of years. And to release it to the atmosphere, it will take uh, maybe tens of, or uh, years or hundreds of years. So it's a very dynamic part. And that was, was uh, mostly how he was talking about. I will uh, spend more time on two uh, other pools in permafrost. One of them, uh, carbon which sequestered in deeper permafrost from several to 40 meters in permafrost, which uh, uh, takes uh, already uh, thousands of years and sometimes tens of thousands of years to sequester and also it takes longer from uh, many decades to centuries or maybe millennia to release into the atmosphere. And I will also briefly mention another pool uh, of carbon which uh, we know much less about 
uh, which related to gas hydrates or methane clathrates, which are in, uh, in a lower part of permafrost and thick permafrost or right beneath the permafrost. Uh, we know much less about it, but it could be potentially very important for uh, what we are talking today uh, about the uh, relationship between changes uh, in climate and permafrost. For this uh, cloth rates, it's already uh, time limits are much longer. So to accumulate it takes uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, and to release it, at least uh, thousands of years. So it's a little bit different uh, creature, but I will mention about it when I will, will talk about it. Okay, so to understand how this deep carbon uh, got into the permafrost and uh, what is uh, the present state of permafrost, we have to go back a little bit and look how recent permafrost formed. And uh, uh, the most important time to look at it will be last glacial, interglacial uh, cycle, or last 100,000 years. So if you look at the um, maximum of last glaciation about 20,000 years ago. And I use as an example uh, the area of the former Soviet Union. Uh, first, because uh, there is uh, lots of data on paleopermafrost available from there. And also because it, the area uh, mostly not covered by uh, big ice sheets during the last glaciation. So that's very important because North America was mostly covered with um, Glacier, uh, uh, ice sheet, but uh, only Alaska and Yukon and some part of uh, northwest of Canada was not. Uh, so uh, as an example, we will look uh, how permafrost changed during this, uh, starting from there and up to present time. So during the, this time, the coldest time, uh, temperature was, uh, terrestrial temperature was uh, at least 10 degrees colder generally than it is right now. Uh, and permafrost, of course, was developing very actively, and not only on present-day land, but also, also because of the sea level was about 120 meters uh, lower than it is right now, all Arctic shells were land, and permafrost was actively growing on this land, on these uh, open shells. And uh, during a long period of time, several tens of thousands of years, very thick permafrost formed on, on uh, uh, present-day shells. Uh, 